Hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe. Come on, Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. What a joy it is to be with all of you yet one more Sunday um, in this house. Welcome to Shiloh Worship Center. This is a campus of Deliverance Church International Kasarani, and we are so glad to be with you today. In case you're a visitor, Karibu Sana, this is a place of breakthrough. And we bless the Lord for you. Thank you, Pastor Joy, for the powerful ministry. The Lord bless you and replenish you in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to celebrate Jesus for Pastor Joy? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. As we were seated there, just, you know, during worship, I kept thinking to myself, what a beautiful privilege it is to be in a place where the voice of God is active. You, do you remember, um, as we read in scripture about um, Israel in the olden days, and it says, and the voice of the Lord was scarce in those days. Have you read that in scripture? And then to think that that is not our testimony and blessed be God, because the voice of God is not scarce in this house. We bless the Lord for that. We thank God for the angels that the Lord has placed. The book of Revelations refers to the, the, the pastors over the houses in the letters to the churches as the angels. We thank God for the angels that God has placed over this house. Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani who are around, not here, but who are around um, over down at the main compass. We bless the Lord for them. In Jesus' name, it shall not be long. You shall see them here soon. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Amen. We want to get right into it right about now. Um, we want to look at the book of Psalm. Hopefully, we will put a um, comma to it um, just for the fear of saying a full stop. Um, Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1, we're looking at the blessed is the man. If I haven't said it, just in case for the visitors, my name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again. Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. I bless the Lord for planting me in this house. Um, it is the honor of my life to serve God and his people here at the DCIKZ. And we bless the Lord. Blessed is the man. We said that by the time we're done with this, we hope that at least if nothing else, we will have committed this portion of scripture to memory. Sindio, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers or of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on it he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, verse 3, that is planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, its leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. But the ungodly, verse 4, are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, and the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord bless his word. Now, previously, on Psalm chapter 1, blessed is the man. We have looked, we have come along. Um, if you've been following with us on Facebook or on YouTube, you're able to uh, know what you're talking about on Spotify, Podbean and Spotify. If you're able to follow through, um, just in case you want to catch up with what we've been talking about. Where we left it last Sunday, we were talking about meditation, yeah? Um, meditating on the word of God. And we said this is not just meditating like Eastern meditation. The goal for Eastern meditation is to empty the mind. You remember we said that? For Eastern meditation, for yoga, for those things, it is the goal is to empty the mind so that you become, you think clearer. That's what it says. But for us, the Bible has recommended how to, it has said what to do, when to do it, and how to do it so that we are not caught in confusion. Because even Eastern meditation says to you, this is how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to sit down in a certain posture. You're supposed to make sure that you're aligned. You're supposed to make sure all those things. That's how you know that it is a different kind of meditation. There's a difference between that and this. And I'm taking time to explain it because thank you for all of those who continue to send questions throughout the week. It's such a blessing to just be able to know that we continue to interact. And so it's a good thing when we ask the questions, asking for a friend, asking for someone else. If you know, if you just have a question, please send it in through whatever channels it shall get to us. So that's the how you know it's different. It's not the same thing um, because scripture gives us how to do it, what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And the other systems also outline it. That's how you know they are different things. So scripture says, what do you do? You meditate. 
How do you do it? By meditating. You meditate on the word of God. That's how to meditate. And then when do you do it? Day and night. So that your days and your nights are covered and there is no space for anything else but God. So that one clears the mind, empties the mind. The idea of godly meditation is that it saturates your mind. It fills your mind with the things of God because nature abhors vacuum. It, it, is, it would be that after a house has been swept clean, it needs to be occupied by the rightful owners. And the rightful owner, the one person, the one thing that should um, occupy our mental real estate should be the word of God. So you meditate on it day and night. We've given the image of a cow and how it ruminates or how it chews cud. Sits down and it chews and breaks down and breaks down. That's how it should be. That's how reading the word should be for us and meditating on the word of God. So today we just want to look at what happens as we meditate on the word of God. The result of it comes in verse 3. This is the result. After that man who does not do those things and does these things, what happens to them? The Bible says he shall be like a tree. It is planted by the rivers of water. It shall be like a, he shall be like a tree that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. I love the idea that it starts by saying he shall be like a tree planted. Because first of all, it is important for us to realize this is not a rogue tree. It is not a rogue tree. It is something has been, it, somebody has taken the time to place it wherever it has been placed. Taking us right back to the very beginning of when we started to share, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, we talked about it, we've mentioned it I think every Sunday. It says we are his workmanship. We said we are a Bible reading church, so we share it together. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he has prepared for us long before we were born. There is an assignment attached to the reason you've been created. Even to the fact that God has saved you as a believer, there is an assignment attached to it. It says that we are a royal priesthood. Is this First Peter 2? We are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's holy nation. And there is a reason, an assignment attached to it. It says that we may be able to tell of the works of him who has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. There is an assignment attached to the Christian life you've been given. You remember we've been talking about it and saying that the reason why God has saved you and did not rapture you into eternity immediately was so that you can remain in this place so that other people might see what a delivered person looks like, what a saved person looks like, what a believer should look like. You are an outlet of God's grace. Do you remember that? It is important for you to realize that you have been planted where you are by God. A planting of the Lord. The Bible will talk about it in the book of Isaiah chapter 60. It says that they may be known as oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord. That is the assignment that God has placed on our lives. It is important for you to know you did not just sprout up. You're not an independent, self-made human being. No, 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 no. You have been planted by God. Tell your neighbor you are planted. Such that there is no coincidence for the believer. Everywhere you go, mapito yako kwa kweli yananyoshwa nae mungu wetu. That everywhere you go, should you find yourself seated somewhere, you know I have been situated in this place today as an outlet of God's grace. And therefore I must act accordingly. It therefore removes the idea for my own life, my own dress, my own choice, my own feelings. I am, no, 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 no. It removes that place. Because now you know you are on, that's right, you are on assignment. That day and night you have been planted somewhere by God. I want you to look at the plants that are seated in the front here. Those plants that have been, those ones are plotted, potted, but they are planted inside there, okay? I want you to look at those plants. The person that planted them did not plant them in the field because he did not want the roots to go down deep into the soil because he knew these ones are for sale. These ones are supposed to go to beautify a place. So when he's planting them, he's not setting them in the ground where nothing can be done about them. Because you and I both know when a tree has already taken root, it's very difficult to remove it. Do you remember the punishments from high school? I'm being a stamp. Such a big assignment. The person that plants those things is taking time and is careful to know that. Kuna miti ya wizi ukaeka kwa pot. Sindio? 
Itabomoyo hiyo maploti ende na hizo nini. Si you see a place has been cemented imetengenezwa alafu unaona tu kirut kina grow tu kina bomoyo hiyo mahali. Because some trees are just not for planting. Hiyo una plant huko huko kwa nini? Huko in the wild. But these ones that have been for a purpose. These ones have been planted purposefully. There is an assignment attached to their being. Imagine and these are well not inanimate things but these are plants. Beloved, if these ones have an assignment attached to them, how much more you and I? People that have been curated by God. I want you to think that the Lord is saying in Genesis chapter is it 1, let there be and let there be and let there be and let there be and the Bible says at the end of every day God says he looks at everything and says it is it is good it is lovely it is nice but then god says let us make he doesn't say let there be man he says let us make let us put together let us carve for an assignment let us specifically select because we've said god is methodical strategic and intentional at how he does things bwana yesu asifiwe it is that he will begin to work from Nahuko in the back and he's just doing something little by little by little we've shared this story here before but let me just mention it we've talked about the story of somebody like Jacob you remember Jacob Jacob brother Esau you remember Jacob in scripture now Jacob has been blessed by God so much he is a blessed blessed wealthy man he goes to the house of his uncle is it Laban anaenda anamfanyia karata huko chini anampiga ini ni character development but he's always coming on top the lord is blessing him with wealth he becomes an extraordinarily wealthy man and there is an assignment attached to his wealth he's not just been made wealthy so that he can just pose and put the selfies of his day on their instagram No 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 no. He has been blessed with an assignment. How I know that is as we go into scripture later in the day of Jesus many years later in the book of John chapter 4. Jesus is meeting with the woman by the well, the Samaritan woman. And the Bible says he met with her where? By Jacob's well. Now if you just go a little bit back, you will find that that area was not an area that had a problem for water. So the only reason anyone would need to have a personal well, a private well was for the exclusivity, the luxurious nature of life. You don't need it, but why not? Ndio ni si vutane na watu. Because he was a wealthy man. You remember as um um Ivan Munio was preaching to us down at the main campus recently and he was telling us that when Abraham used to stop by a town people would notice because amekuja mangombe manini mambuzi camels droves of cattle and animals livestock akiingia kwanza kuna tifua vumbi maduka zinafungwa kwa sababu it's just crazy traffic and then all the wells there is no place for you to go and chota maji like when what is happening in town say, eh, Abraham is in town I'm like oh no wonder Now even for Jacob it was like that. So Jacob is like stuck in his kumani na watu. Have you ever heard of people who are so wealthy they have their own fuel station? Uko na fleet of vehicles. Badala ya kwenda kuangana pale chini na wale watu matatu, nini kina mwashigadi, unaangana na ah ah unasikia ati mafuta imeisha how now? So let me just get my own fuel station. Si ati juma mafuta imekuisha, lakini just for the sake of my own exclusivity and for my own convenience. Ndio nikitaka mafuta ninapata. Nisiambiwe ah kuna mtu kuna watu wawili mbele yako watu wawili nikisema nini Nikiwa na yangu hata kukiwa na watu wawili wote ni wangu You get So the only reason that Jacob would have needed to have a private well in such an area was for the reason of exclusivity Now but you and I also know that the other reason that God had behind the scenes was because a private thing and a public thing which one survives for longer Oh come on you know what we are talking about Ukienda private toilet na uende public toilet zile za pale town. Ni gani ziko better maintained? Private things are better maintained. You pay more attention to things that are yours. So private things most of the times private things have a better chance of standing the longer test of time. Now God had to make sure in the wealth of Jacob there was this so much wealth he needed to be exclusive have his own private well because he knew many years later he needed a place to facilitate his meeting of the Samaritan woman. 
Now, scripture says in the beginning of John chapter 4, it says that Jesus had to pass through Samaria. He was compelled as if while he was standing on the balcony of heaven just before coming into Mary's womb. Among the things he needed to do before he left the earth after those 33 years was meet with the Samaritan woman. And so as he blessed Jacob many years ago, he knew he was resourcing and facilitating his meeting with the Samaritan woman. That even the things that God has placed in your hand are not for you. Not for you alone at least. Scripture reminds us you are not your own. You are bought with a price, purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. There is no longer space for the believer to think mimi, kivyangu, pesayangu, nyumbayangu, watuangu, watotoangu, mpenziwangu. Do you know what I'm saying? I want you to think about our bishop and our mom. I want you to think about how our mom has to share the bishop with all of us. I want you to think about his children. And how, <laughs> and how they have to share them with all of us. They're like, oh, dad, oh, dad, oh, dad. Like, sa zingine hata wewe mwenye unamuita dad unapata priority. Uyule mwenye kopale anahafu kungojea wa fika hunyumbani. It comes into a place of understand, a deep understanding that you are not your own. That the things that the Lord has placed in your hand are supposed to go into generations. A planting of the Lord is what you are. It says he shall be the person that continues to meditate. Now the Lord has good use for you because he knows his resource is on the inside of you. What is the resource of God? The word of God. It is on the inside of you. And so he knows wherever he plants you, you are a resourceful person. So he can plant you correctly. When the person was creating these flower pots, he did not know they were going to land at Shiloh. Because two years ago, we did not know about Shiloh, true or true. So it cannot be that that person knew about Shiloh. But he knew, even though the assignment was not clear, he knew it will be taken to a place to beautify a place. Might have been a house, might have been a restaurant, might have been a hotel, might have been a school, might have been a church. But wherever it would have gone, it would serve its purpose. Because your purpose is not defined by the places around you or the people around you. It is defined internally. Your purpose is intrinsic. Inakujanga iku andani already. That when the Lord placed you on the earth, it is not that we are now starting to define your purpose. No, 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 no. Your purpose is innate. I-N-N-A-T-E. Ikondani yako kwa kweli. Your assignment is innate. As you meditate on the word of God, you're saturating yourself. You're filling yourself. You remember the example of a cup of coffee and the water? You are filling yourself with the word of God. So that whatever is not supposed to be there fizzles out and now you're only filled with the word of God then God can place you wherever he wants to go. It cannot be that when this ati ikitu ingeenda kwa hotel ya inge beautify sana, lakini jume kuja church at least. No, no, no. Wherever it would be placed, even if we were to take it from here and take it to state house, it is still going to do what? Beautify. Planting of the Lord is what you are, beloved, as you meditate on the word of God, as you walk away from the counsel of the ungodly, as you no longer stand in the path of sinners, as you refuse to sit from in the seat of scoffers, as you no longer make light of the things of God, as you take the things of God heavily. I remember many years ago, Reverend Samuel Gesho, he said to us, if you take the things of God casually, you become a casualty. Those are the scoffers, people who take the things of God casually. You just need light to mm-hmm. it takes so hard, so hard, gosh. Make so mna so funny mna pray in tongues, gosh, can you serious evil? Hey, I want to call the pastor wakuje to umbe pamoja. Please pass kuja me, I just want you to come and anoint my hands with oil. Anointing tena, gosh. Like see a kuja to a umbe ni nini. What's all this oil business yet I meet on you? Kwanza hiyo mafuta, Pietro Coricelli, pesa nyingi? Nakuja kuipaka kwa mikono. Kwa forehead. Oh my gosh. You're not taking the things of God casually. Okay, as you, away, as you go away from those things, you begin to meditate on the word of God. The result is that you shall be like a tree planted. And then it continues to say, by the rivers of water. It says, planted by the rivers of water. I also like to think to myself, it does not say by a river. You see, there is a difference between a tree that is planted in one river and by many rivers. 
Because should this one river fail, there's another river to sustain. Should this river fail, this another river is here to sustain. There are many supplies coming. You remember the story about the Garden of Eden and where it was situated and how there were rivers flowing to the east and in the west there were rivers. There was the supply of God consistently. At the beginning, God had the idea of multiplicity flowing to sustain his idea. That there is a river of grace and a river of peace and a river of love and a river of hope. And when this one goes low, you're still not low on the float of this other one. By the rivers of water. It says, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. Let's try and address a, 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 a misconception here that we like to find in the lives of believers, and maybe you found in your own life, I know I found it in my own life, that we think to ourselves that just because I am doing what God requires me to do, then I need to be prospering every season. I can never go dry. No, 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 that's a misconception. Scripture says, even through all these things, this man shall be like a river planted by rivers of water. Shall this one go down? This one shall still be up sustaining. But even with all those good conditions, seasons will still apply. There's winter and there's summer and there's spring and there's autumn. There's seasons. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, as Moses is delivering that beautiful, beautiful sermon to the people, he says to them, it is I, God, that caused you to hunger, and then I filled you with manna, which neither you nor your forefathers knew. Why? So that you may understand that man shall not live on bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Leave it right there. It says he humbled you and allowed you to hunger, and then he fed you. Seasons. There are seasons that will come that the Lord will allow. The Lord allows it. I love Pastor Kibera for something he says. He says that God does not cause all things to happen, but he allows all things to happen. I know we might have a bit of a problem with thinking that, but it says this. Allows all things to happen. Doesn't cause. Because we, say, we find in the book of James, God cannot be tempted by evil. So God does not cause evil things to happen. He allows them. How do we know the story of Job chapter 1? The sons of God are coming to present themselves and the devil, ever the filthy old serpent, an opportunist presents himself there. And it, who, who, who volunteers Job? Come on. God himself. The devil does not come and say, um, I've been looking around, <laughs> uh, going around, you know, Machweo, Mauku Kwingine, Magaribi, Mashariki. Nakuna mse anaitua Job, ukinirusu. No, no, no. It is of God's own volition. Mungu uh, Hey, um, might you have considered my servant Job? The only problem is that Job didn't know. I asked myself, where else is God volunteering my name that I don't know about it in the present day? But you see, it is also so empowering for me to remember it is God that is suggesting. He says in the book of 1 Corinthians, is it 10 and 13, that even though you will be tested, he will not allow anything to come to you that you cannot be able to handle. And even when he allows things to come to you, there is always a way of escape. God is making sure that he sits over you as a refinery, as a refiner over the fire. It is a refiner. The refiner knows how much this can take. And so what when I say, what? Unache yo gold ikaya po juwe yo moto. Si ita chomeka, si ita isha. And this is like, relax, I understand. And you know, you know. You'll imagine if the gold had a voice, it would be saying, ah, it's too hot. It's too hot. Remove me now. I can't handle it. But the refiner knows. So God himself is the one proposing. So the Lord allows for the children of Israel a season of hunger. And then... He allows a season of satisfaction. So the rhythm of drought and satisfaction, or the rhythm rather, let's put it this way, the rhythm of hunger and satisfaction of thirst and quenching is created by God himself. And the reason for that is so that you and I may both understand that man shall not live on bread alone, come on, but by that proceeds, somebody say meditation on the word. Man shall not dwell on bread alone, but by every word. So, but by meditating on the word of God, day and 
that day and night I am given to this one thing, giving myself to meditating on the word of God. That, however, does not mean that now my life is just no. No. Everyone goes through seasons of life. So do not, be, do not bite the hook and the lie of the enemy telling you, you're going through a difficult season. What? <laughs> Tough on you. It must be because God has not accepted you. So just come back. It must be because of those things you used to do. Oh, Amen. The devil will try to lie to you. But remember, brethren, the same word as we meditate on it says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Don't bite to that hook of the enemy. There is such a regenerating work that the human mind cannot be able to understand. So you try to speak to somebody, you try to explain to people that you've come into, sometimes you try to explain to yourself. I'm not just saying, I'm a new person. And your own mind is just like, mm. my Lord, I would like to bring into evidence. Mnamo Tarehe, Mwakawa, Alfmbili, Kuminatano, 2015. Lakini ya kilako ya kwambia, alikuwa mevalia magwanda ya kazi. Lakini pale pale ya kakumbuka ya kwamba, alafu unanza kukumbuka, by the way, ni mini lifanyo mambo. Enyewe, na kwa nikijichocha hapa sana, hakuna hii kitu hukufu ni kisa. Ah, then unanza kuwa discouraged, unanza kurudi nyuma. No, 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 beloved. Seasons happen to all of us. The Lord allows it. I want you to think to yourself. Right now, as you go around, you see avocados everywhere. Some avocado lovers in the house. You see, <laughs> you see, I'm me and Pastor Beatrice, avocado lovers in the house. As you go around, avocados go kila mahali. Maembe has patikani tu ivo. Saizi. Lakini kuna season. Hata machungo saizi majas, ndio? Lakini kuna season. If you're watching this in a different month, this is the month of September, okay? <laughs> as you, for context. Um, kuna season unatembea ni maembe tu imejaa huko kila mahali. Now, the people who have trees za mango, are they now cutting down those trees? Saying, hata hauzai wewe, hata hauzai, hauko kama avocado wewe, hata nakutupa motoni. No, 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 no. And the question in your mind would be, Jesus says in John 15, is it John 15, that tawi ndani yangu lisilo zaa ni taliondoa na kulitupa. Therefore, if I'm not bearing fruit right now, but it is bearing fruit in season. Now, when the season has come, and Jesus is coming to look at the fig tree, because it is fully lifted out, it is saying, I have figs, and then he finds there is no fruit, that is when he's discouraged. But the master is not, is not a terrible man. Our master is not a liar. Our master is not these people who are conniving and they just want to catch you at fault. No, 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 no. That's not our Lord. He is full of love and he is just. A, a property of God that most times we overlook. But he is just. Hango J ufanya makosa ndi wakwambia, ehe, ehe, anakungojea tu na kiboko. No sooner have you done what you're supposed to do, unasikia kiboko imekuangukia. No, no, no. He's not trying to drive us in fear. He's not endlessly holding us in and out of court. No. But throughout the seasons, when he comes to check for fruit, it is because the season for that fruit is now due. Some days, if you think about seasons, thinking three months, ten months, no, you might be mistaken. Because you and I both know, some of the seasons that God is coming to check for fruit happen in minutes. Real time. In the day. Five minutes ago, it was not the season for love. But now, God is coming to check. Mm -hmm. Love? Wewe sa hiyo ata love, ata ujapanda mbegu ya love. Wacha kutoa matunda. So wakikuja, he's constantly finding. Eh. You know the beautiful thing about it? We said this from the beginning, but we'll say it again. It is that it is not do's and don'ts. It is a life that is empowered by the grace of God. As you receive the Holy Spirit into your life, your life becomes different. You're not even, you're not even working hard. You see, when you plant a, um, a seed in the ground, the seed is not struggling to grow. If you put it in the right conditions, it will just grow. Have you ever seen nini hapa kwa pavement, hapa katikati? Unapata ka plant tu kamechomuka tu hivi, ka plant, beautiful thing, ka flower hata. Unashindua katikati ya isi miti. Lakini mbegu ilianguka tu bali pale pazuri. 
na ikapata conditions it's not struggling to grow i say me i i shouldn't grow i'm between concrete this is pavement no let me just wait until i'm planted in nice places no 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 if the conditions are right it's going to sprout that's how you will find that the bible says and isaac sowed in that land in the famine and in that same year he reaped a hundredfold why because the conditions were not for the land the conditions were in it bona sifiwe you meditate on the word of god you are fl- you are flourishing you're just flourishing any unanyunyizia your ideas some of you have great god ideas inside of you the reason why they might not be growing consider is maybe because you are unazinyima the essentials what are the essentials see at water sunlight nini nini hizo za mbegu za huku nje the essentials are the nutrition of the word of god fellowship with the holy spirit prayer taking it before the lord in prayer is of it shower that seed shower it in a jar to in a jar to in a jar and then you start to see your ideas are just coming to life you're not struggling with it nothing how shall i see to it how shall i how shall i get a promotion kuna ule mzee anakuwa na close na boss ama niende nianze kum eh nikimtoa sasa mimi ndio nitaingia next so nianze kumchimbia hivi chini aingie kwa atoke afutwe kazi alafu imepata you are struggling and it won't work utafutwa kazi mwenyewe but imagine on the flip side of it you are seeing that and you would desire that the lord would elevate you to that place that when your boss needs something you are anaita say so, um ashila uh, uh, robert every time how do you then grow it in the place of the word you read the word of god you meditate on it because the word has something to say about every of our situations as you meditate on it the lord shows you there is a gap that needs to be filled what is that gap hata inakuwa tu ni ile ah unaingianga asubuhi unakuja unaangalia unaona hakuna nini una empty dust bins zote jo labda ofisi yenyewe ijafika pale pa kukuwa na cleaner so una empty dust bins zote za ofisi from the previous day kuja unaziweka you're not doing it so that somebody can see you You're just doing it because you have seen as reading of the word that the bible says moreover first corinthians is it one two it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful so umeamua you will be a faithful steward unaamka ukifika kazini unakuja unaona ah ziko unazi empty unazi empty siku moja tu boss anakuanga ameketi pale anasema hizi vitu unazipatanga zikiwa empty kila siku ile siku anakuja mapema anakupata wewe ndio unarudi una dustbin unasema oh oh no i've just come from emptying this one you can unarudi kazini siku moja boss anaketi tu anasema ah You remember the way how the king was woken up in the day of Mordecai. It says the king could not sleep. He's shaken up at night by his own internal things. Mungu tu. Alafu anaamka anasema bring me the books of remembrance. Let me tell you what was done to this man. Sima, my lord, nothing was done to him. Asema ah, make haste now. Wake him up, bring him. Nileteni hapa hamani. Nini kinafaa kufanywa kwa mtu ambaye amefanya mambo kama haya? Asema ah, mfalme, mweke kwenye horse. Mbalishe magwanda ya kifalme azungushwe akisema this is the man the king is like aha go and find Mordecai do exactly that to this man when Mordecai was doing those good things he was not doing them so that the king the king needs to see me nimeji position vizuri mnaniona as i am leading worship i am not thinking hmm. ndio ile siku yenye apostle atarudi Kenya mara ya pili wakitafuta watu wa kwenda kuimba kule wanasema there is a man i usually see on a, a live feed youtube suggested deliverance find that man for him for me bring him so that he can lead stir up the atmosphere before the apostles no 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 if i cannot be trusted with my small season i should not be trusted with a big season so do what you need to do as a result of just soaking in the word of god let god give you a god idea and whatever your hands find to do do it as unto the lord not for mere men read colossians 3 and 23 whatsoever your hands find to do that's why it finishes by saying whose leaf that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper now there's an interesting line here that says whose whose leaf also shall not wither think about it this way beloved when it is winter and the trees don't have the leaves makazi mekuwa stripped they are bare the tree has not withered those leaves have fallen off but the tree is still very healthy ah. just because the seasons have changed does not mean that the tree has withered 
But you and I both know that it is possible for a tree to be in its full season. It's supposed to be thriving. Everything is right. Jua pale, maji pale, oxygen, amani, carbon dioxide. CO2. Uh -huh. What? Either or. <laughs> it can be that those, everything is going on right, but the tree is just is sick on the inside. So it begins to wither. So on the outside, it might even look healthy, but on the inside, in a kulika tu pole pole, it is hollow. Have you ever seen no one to meet you kule aboretam? Alafu unenda tu unas, nipigia selfie hapa, ukilali evi na anguka. Like, ah. It looked like a healthy tree. Isn't that the story of most of us? We look healthy on the outside. Niki chomo kaivi. Nimeka ukaivi. Ah, whom to watch and come be. Ana kwa na word. Kwa am deep. Kinindani. Kwa zorota kwa kweli. Mambo maovu. Hamna kitu. Kunka uka. That cannot be the. You see, that's why our goal is not to empty the mind. Our goal is to fill the mind and saturate it with the word of God. Because the word of God brings healing. It makes whole. The word of God brings life. The word of God leaves healing in its wake. Ah, everything that is left there is made right. That's why we must meditate on the word of God. Because it is not throughout the seasons. It could be winter season for me. It is dark. It is cold. I am just seated there. Nothing is happening. But I am not with that. I am seated before God. Remember, we talked about it, Lamentations chapter 3 last week. And I said, it is good that a young man would submit to the yoke of the Lord. Sit silently before the Lord because the Lord has laid it upon him. As I go through a difficult season, let me just sit. Maybe I'm going through a season of grief. Even in that season, I'm not like, hey, now things are not going well. Hey, my drinks, I say my drinks to Kunyweni. God, I'm in heart. No, 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 no. I'm not just like, awalete, awalete. Nikona my drinks, kujana ma? Hey, hey. Hey, youth church, niku tricky, but. It doesn't mean that now because I'm going through a different difficult season that now I have shifted goalposts. No, 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 no. I am still on assignment. Why? Because regardless of what comes at me, the inside, the inside is still okay. Um, one of us actually here was um, uh, picked up the conversation in the book of Job throughout the, during this week. And it made me go back to read the book of Job. So I was looking at Job chapter 1 and 2. We're talking about Job chapter 4. So I looked at Job chapter 1 and 2. Then I looked at chapter 3. Chapter 3 is where Job is breaking his silence. So the, the things have happened in chapter 1 and 2. He has lost everything. And the Bible says, and Job tore his clothes. And he put whatever on his head. And he fell to his face. And he did what? And he worshipped. Little wonder God had something to say about Job. Because some of us, half of what Job has gone through, a quarter, an inkling of what Job is going through. Oh, my life is over. Ata God is not real. Ata is if you tumna semanga. Ata mean ata kuja church, by the way. Ata nili nini. I saw a meme the other day and somebody was saying, Sija kuona church lately, umekua? Sija kuwa nikikamu. Asama, ah, imbona? Asama, nilimaliza. Umepitia maonjo, ukwati like, yeah, I'm done. Iyo sila basi nikani limaliza na nayo. Sana ngoja to heaven. When difficult things will come, beloved, the bishop has taught us in years past about the doctrine of suffering so that we are not growing like irresponsible believers. The, 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 the scriptures remind us, is it Job actually who says, shall we only accept good from the Lord and not accept everything else that comes from him? We must be in the place of saying that no small thing can fall from such a greater hand. So when the good things come, blessing zobu zobu. But should the bad things come? Zobu zobu. But the grace. That's right. Sufficient in double double as well. So Paul says, I sought the Lord three times and said, Lord, this thing is heavy. Remove it from me. God, I can handle this. Remove it. God, I can't do this thing. And the Lord says, what? I have received right now your removal. This thing is no longer going to beg, disturb you. That's what God says. 
God says, my grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, sit down, shut up, enjoy my presence. So that we are not those young people that go around just thinking, hey, things are going so well for me. When I get off the wimbo pale kwa YouTube, I see kwa YouTube kwa Instagram. Music ya kweka na post yako. I'm blessed. Everything around me says, I'm blessed. No, no, no. That even when things are going so badly, I'm just like, wow, the Lord has just wounded me. If you read the book of Lamentations, you'll find that portion. I said, Jeremiah just lamenting and saying, wow. I am the man who has seen the affliction of the Lord. He has filled my mouth with gravel and put my mouth in the dust. Manze, he has wounded me deeply. His spear has gone right through me. Read it in the book of Lamentations. And then he says, then I rejoice when I remember the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And Job fell to his face. And he worshipped. This is the result of filling your life with the things of God. And meditating on them day and night. That regardless of what season you find yourself in. I'm not saying that now we have become robots. No, no, no. Let me just make that clear before we finish. I'm not saying now we are robots. Say, oh, Mashigadi, um, this and this is a, Mashigadi is in a season of pain and mourning. Now I'm just like, hi, everyone. I'm good. I'm going through a really difficult season. <laughs> but wow, <laughs> the grace of the Lord is... <laughs> wow. No, no, no. We're not saying be inhuman and be weird. My eyes are filled with tears. I am crying. But in my heart, I am encouraged. Remember the example of David. They are coming from Ziklag. And they find... Or is it in Ziklag? And they come and they find... Wamehamishwa. They have gone to battle. Wakikuja wanapata. Sio ngombe, sio mbuzi. Sio kuku, sio vitu. Sio wake zao, wake wao. Even their wives have been carried away. The Bible says the men, they wailed until they didn't have strength to wail again. Nituwa kabema wanaume ya ishiwe nganguvu ya kunini? Unalia hadi unajaribu kuleo kwa laika. Manze ya chana, yustoria sina nganguvu ya kulea tena. Sama lakini sina uma, ina uma kabisa lakini sana dalia nini. Machozi imekuisha. Sina, nguvu, saa tukotu hapa. It says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's the thing. I am willing until I can't anymore. I'm just like, God, how many do? Whoa, how many tender? Lakini wewe, wewe, afadhali kwako. Pawata tu nikai kwako. When Jesus went to the wilderness, we talked about this last week. The Bible says he was led there by who? By the Holy Spirit. He's not in the wilderness. In the <laughs> this is the word make him from heaven and man say, me, I'm a child of God. Me, man say, I'm an only child. Me, me, man say, stack is my V to me. This is not my life. No. Jesus doesn't come. He's like, hey, me, soft life, me. This is not what I bargained for. <laughs> you know, you would expect if you today would be sent out to go and die for other people, Nauko, in the heart of Sijui Trukana, they'd be like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But the office must facilitate me with transport. And every week, pizza must be delivered to me. And every week, I must have bottled water, flavored water. I'm seeing hands going all over the back. Just like, yes, yes. But Jesus is coming down to the human experience and he's tested every emotion just like you and I. He's not spared because he's a son of God. Actually, as he's hanging on the cross, being beaten and smitten and stricken, as he's hanging over there, it's just like he's, he was fully God and fully man. He had the ability of just numbing the pain and just be like, Zhew. like, hmm, give me your worst mere mortals. <laughs> no. But he feels the pain and he's stripped of his clothes. You can see his nakedness. And we're just there like, wow, poor man. This guy is the son of God. That's why people had it very difficult to, under, to try and reconcile. Only child of God. Only which God is this that cannot take care of their son on the cross being humiliated? Has he a robe from heaven? Funika uchiam totango at least. But that was a season. I mean, think about it even quite literally. And a season of 
of, of a season is coming where the Son of God is going to be displayed in his full splendor and glory. When the trumpet has sounded, oh, what a glorious day. Tunapomlaki mawinguni kwa kweli. You see Jesus for who he really is. And all the angels are doing, because they see him in that season in heaven, they are falling down on their faces. They are like, holy, holy, holy. Lord God. Wanainuka hivyo, wanainuka, oi, oi, holy, holy, holy. Wanainuka tena wajawe na kitu mzuri hivyo, oi, holy, again, over and over again. That same Jesus, alikuwa naonekana pale, watu wana mwangaliwa na mtemea mate. The Savior. Savior, my friend, shut your mouth. Just... <laughs> If those seasons came to Jesus, I want to imagine, I want to, in fact, encourage you to know that those seasons will come to you as well. But what keeps us, the difference between you and the other person who does not do these things, meditating on the word of God, is that you have something on the inside. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, Pastor Beatrice talked about it last week. It says, any man who hears these words of mine and works them into his life, in the message paraphrase, works them into his life, shall be like a man who built his house upon the rock. And the rains came, and the winds blew, but the house on the rock stood firm. What did that man do? He had those words, and he worked them into his life. Wadada, ama wanaume. Unajua kukanda unga? Unafanya nini? Unasikizanisha, the kikui word, the kikuyu rendering of that word is koigwithania. Okay? <laughs> Unasikizanisha unga na sukari na chumvi na baking powder unazi until they are one and the same. That every part of your dough, baking dough, is the same taste. Imesikizanishwa. As you meditate on the word, what you're doing is unaigwithania your life. That should they come to my head, it is the word of God they will find. And it is the same that they will find at my toes. Sio saa zingine mdomo mdomo kwa kweli mdomo That is the thing about meditating on the word of God. Unafanya nini? Unaigwithania. I don't know the English word for it. Unaigwithania the word of God into your life as you meditate that's what you're doing. You're working the word of God into your life. Then the rains, the seasons come. The rains come and the winds blow but the house on the rock stands. But it says but a person who had these words and just ignore them. It's like a man who built his house upon the sand. The same seasons will come. The seasons will come to the righteous and to the unrighteous. The rains will fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. But what determines whether you stand or you fall is what you have put in your heart. David says, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The message paraphrase says, I have hidden your word or stored up your word in the vault of my heart that I will not sin myself bankrupt. Usijiache ukiwa ukondani hakuna kitu. Oh, I pray that we take up the challenge to meditate on the word of God. That when the seasons come, when the seasons change, we remain the same. Beloved, scripture reminds us in Philippians 4 and 8, Therefore, brethren, finally, whatever is good, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, I read that portion of scripture and I struggle to find anything that can be like those things apart from the word of God. It says, think upon such things. Meditate on these things. Come and take a minute and make that prayer to the Lord this day. Say, God, help me to meditate on your word. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me. Most of us are fighting to try and make sure that our seasons remain good throughout. Day and night, we are fighting. But what you're doing is you're fighting the wrong thing. There is that Seasons are just the result. Seasons are going to come. Don't fight the result. Go to the foundation. The foundation is what have you placed on the inside. Seasons will come. Some of you are in a difficult season right now. Some of you are in your winter. It is dark and you feel like nothing is happening inside there. Some of you are in your beautiful season. Everything is all nice and rosy. But those seasons are going to change. We have been reminded here before you're either in a storm, going through a storm, or going, coming out of a storm or going into a storm. That regardless of whatever season will come, you can't control that. What you can control is what you fill yourself with. What are you putting in your heart? Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you because you've spoken to us in accents that are so clear and so still. That as a planting of the Lord, you have an assignment for us. And as we carry out that ass assignment, we are doing it in the earth where there are so many seasons. And some of the times the seasons are changing day and night, day and night. In the same day, we might go through all the seasons multiple times. 
We pray that, Lord, as you come to search for fruit during these seasons, that we shall not be found lacking. And the only sure bet for this is if we actually meditate on your word. Not to try and empty, but to try and saturate our minds and our lives with the word of God. Oh, that we would place this importance of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. That day and night, we would meditate and focus on you. Therefore, we pray for you and your help, Holy Spirit of God, that you would help us. That you would help us, Holy God, to live like you, to meditate. Give us an appetite for your word. Sometimes it might get tiring. Sometimes it might get a bit usual. Sometimes it might even feel boring. But this is our solution. No one delights at the swallowing of medicine, even though it be for their help and for their benefit. And Lord, we want to take this prescription that you've given to us, this singular prescription for a life in you, Lord Jesus, a victorious Christian life. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. That's our prayer today that you would show yourself strong. And maybe you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus. As we continue to just bow our heads, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I submit to you, you cannot meditate on the word if you have not a relationship with the owner of those words. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you lift your hand, we'll sit quickly and pray with you. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus. Are you there? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you and we honor you. As you continue to consider the voice of God in this place today, at any point during this service, even at the end, feel free to walk to any of the leaders in the front and just tell them, I want to be born again. I want to give Jesus my life. I want him to run my life. Because I submit to you, beloved, you cannot desire to meditate on the words of someone whose relation, who you, have, you don't have a relationship with. Father, we thank you for your word today. We receive it with thanksgiving. We pray that throughout this week, it shall find work in our lives and that you shall help us to work it into our lives, into every area, that as you come to search for fruit, Lord Jesus, we would be found fruitful, not withered, supplied to by the rivers of your grace, because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a victorious week in Jesus' name. Amen.